Hi, hope you are doing well. Today we will discuss about distinct until changed operator from RHS and what is that and how you are going to use that in our application. So let's start the video. Hi everyone, this is Subrat and you are watching Fun of Heuristics. So on this channel, you will get to know about the programming languages, the framework and all about the algorithms. So please consider subscribing and hit the bell icon if you haven't yet. The distinct until change operator is used when you need always a different value from the previous emitted value. So what I mean is the distinct until change operator will not emit you the value if the previous emitted value is same as the current emitted value means current emitting value. So it will block your previously emitted value to be emitted from your final observable and we'll see that by using a simple example. So I will just take it off. So from the off, we'll get a stream of data here. So what I will do, I will use some similar numbers. So you just need to pipe the observable with our distinct until change operator from RSA. So this is a normal one. So if 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 don't, you don't want to use some specific way and I will going to show you how you're going to compare the obje objects and all. So how the distinct until change operator detecting any any changes. So it's storing a previous state, previous emitted state and it's checking the new value is coming. So if it is different, then it will emit the value to the final observable. If it's not, then it will not, it, it will block the observable emission in that place. So here if you see first will emit one. So it will store one. It will store one and emit one as well. Then again if you go one it will as one is previously emitted. So it will not going to emit the one again. So it will skip that one and go for the two. It will get emitted and here it will not. Here again that's that will continue. So I will just subscribe to this one and we'll just console.log. Okay so I'll just save this one. Now we'll start the server. So now we'll go to the browser. I will just bring the tab here and here I'll just refresh the page. Here you can see we are getting one, two, three, four, five, three. So you can see that we are getting three two times and the region as I just explained, it will only check the previous emitted value. That's the reason I have put like one, to multiple times to just to demonstrate you but it will going to emit this three and this three so it's not removing all the duplicates value from the observable it will just not emit the previously emitted value and that's what what happening happening here that's what normal distinct until change operator will do with a primitive values so these are the normal normal primitive values suppose think like if you have a list of objects and the objects it will same if you have two different objects if you compare them if they have similar data also their reference are different so it will not be uh, considered as a similar object because the reference is different so in that case we'll see how to handle that but if you are getting similar object then this will also going to handle that that one as well so i will just demonstrate that one so I'll just create an object and instead of this one, two, three, I will just try to emit object three times. And if we'll go to a browser here, you can see we got our object only once. And that's what got emitted by the distinct until change operator. Suppose think like if I'll do like this, I'll just copy this one and I will just obj2 and here I'll just pass obj2. Now you will going to see two object because as I told it will going to check the total object equality means here our two objects reference are different from each other that's the region it's happening and how we're going to fix that is by using a comparator so by default it's uses a comparator and as as previously we are emitting one two three value that that means those are primitive value so it can be compared or by the value so here you can catch the previous and the current value so it is ur so here what you can return is json dot stringify so if if the distinct until change will return true that means it will not allow you 
to emit a value. If it will return false, then it will allow you to return a value. That means if your two objects are similar, then the comparator will return true. So what we'll do is we'll just use the previous. I can use the equal to and the current. Now, if I will save, if I go to the browser here, if you, I will just refresh it again here, you can see now you are getting only one value because here we have overridden the default method. So default how it's checking with the reference. So here we are giving our own comparator that is by checking previous and current value. So here we are stringifying the value. So this is what a distinct until change operator is and how you're going to use it. So we'll see a simple example and where you can use it uh, in your application. So it's just an example. So you can use it multiple place. Suppose think like you have a very big uh, JSON file which you need to send to the server to store the data. Things like you, you user profile. So here, here you are storing a lot of value in different different forms and we are combining all the value to a JSON and you are sending it to the server. And you are sending that to the server by hit of a button or, or hit of next or something. Okay. So in that case, suppose think like you, know, you have a object uh, like I will just say user object or think like this is your object and you are putting different values and these are your different forms of data or different uh, APIs data and you need to send this whole object to your backend or to a server to be stored in your DB. So in that case, if the user is hitting the save button or, or the next button or any, any action, you need to call to the server. So what you can do, you can grab that event as an observable of, you can use a subject and you can pass that to a distinct until change operator. And if there is any change in the object, so then it will going to emit and you can send that value or send that data to the server to, to be stored. So we'll going to see how can do that. So for now, what we will do, we'll just put this on the top. Okay. So here think like this is the object we are going to use a, as a thing. So you obviously will going to create a model or a, a TS class and you're going to use that way. But for the, for this video, I'm just doing like this. So we're going to use that. So on click of a button, we're going to call save data and the save data will going to emit a subject. So I have created a subject is, uh, is a data subject. So it is here, a data subject and we'll emit the, our user, user object. So here, but you can do this. The reason is, so if, if, if you do like this, your previous and current will always going to be same because as this is a kind of a global variable for the whole class. So whenever the previous or the current will trying to access the reference will be same. So think like you are storing the value from here and here you are passing to previous and the current. So it's like that. So if you are, so here, what you have to do is again, you need to parse the value. So for that, you can do a object assign, but the faster way is faster and the efficient way is just do JSON dot parse then. So here, what I'm doing is on call of save data, we are emitting a copy of the same object. We are not emitting our user object because as I told you, if you emit only the user object, not by parsing that uh, to a new object, then it will going to the, your previous and the current both will going to refer to the same point. Then you will always going to get true here. So your observable will not emit any value after it's emitted the first value. Now we'll go to our HTML and the button name is save data and on click of that, we're going to call our, our save data method. Okay. Okay. What I will do is so this dot object dot 
profile equals to I'm just putting a random value which doesn't have any refer to the data or profile. We need to use this subject instead of this off. So what I'll do is we'll go and paste it here. So our this subject now is piped with our distinct until change and here we are parsing that value. Now if I'll save the, if I have saved the file, now if I'll go to the browser and I'll try to see if you can see here, we have our uh, save data button. Once I will click, you see we, we got our profile and data and, and, and try to click that again. So if you can see I'm clicking, but it's not emitting any value because it's checking here. Now, if you see, if you will just change some value. So what we will do, we'll create a, so first we'll take as empty and we'll try to add that name to our input field here. So here we can access the data by the form control as well, but for now, I will just remove this value here and we're going to use the ng model and you will I will use the name. So now if you'll go to our save uh, data file, so instead of adding the value here, here you can assign that name so that we can check that one if there is any change. So now I will go to our, our page. If I will just first I will put add Subrat, now I hit save data. Here, if you see, are getting uh, Subrat, I'm, I'm trying to put multiple time, but if I just uh, put something else, so if I just put Wahul, and if I just hit again, now you can see you we got the data again. Now I have to keep on putting, hitting multiple time, but we are not getting the data. I will just clear it again. Now if we we'll go back to the Subrat again, now we are, we are seeing we are getting the data. So this is the scenario where you can use your uh, distinct until change operator pretty efficiently. And I know this thing can be achieved in various ways. But here I'm saying if your if your object is pretty big and if you are putting that object from multiple forms, then this will be helpful. So that's it for today. Today we saw what is a distinct until change operator and where you can use that and how is filtering the previous value and emitting the current value which is different from the previously emitted value and how you can use that in your application. So please hit the like button if you are liking the video till now and please subscribe to the channel and don't forget to hit the bell icon so that you will not miss further videos and if you are liking my work and you want to support me you can support me on the Patreon. I will give the link in the description below and please give some valuable comments, suggestion in the comment section below. And please share this video with your friends, family, colleague. And to know more about programming and web development, you can watch this video and it will be pretty helpful. So watch the video and we're going to meet in the next video. Till that, stay happy. Bye-bye.